So welcome back guys. Today I got Kabin with me. He is a PhD student studying in Japan. So would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Um, my name is Kabin and I'm a PhD student first year. I uh, started like next, last year. Um, I'm doing integrated system engineer and um, yeah, I've been living in Japan for like five years now. Wow, so integrated engineer, that's a, th those are three big words. So can you explain to the viewers that, like, how, how would you explain that in a simpler terms for normal people? So to be more specific, I'm studying computer science for my master's degree. And the system is to basically use that knowledge to make a system. So basically they're like uh, the user involved to this and there will be, you know, a system uh, development involved to this and also like a research like what would be a novelty for your work? Um, what is your contribution to the society? And like yeah, basically like this, uh, the novelty and like contribution to the science. Yeah. So, and it's more to be more specific. I'm doing like AI. Okay. Let's, yes. the, the, here comes the big word. <laughs> so my next question is, why did you choose Japan to pursue your PhD? Well, it goes back um, in 2020. I mean, 2019. At that time, uh, I was doing my uh, senior year at my my university, like my bachelor degree, and um, I met a professor from Japan. So right now, she's my supervisor, and um, at that time, she's still doing the like computer vision research, and she want to uh, try a new like AI system. So she need more students to 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 do the that research. And um, yeah, she, she tried to look for other countries, uh, student and like she come to my university in Thailand and we would talk and she's, I, I explained to her that I was like really interesting in the Tesla AI system. And um, yeah, she basically takes me in and she work on uh, an AI project at that time. And like, yeah, I got a chance to work with her. And since then, and now I'm like still yeah working with her in on the AI system. Okay, so my next question is related to your MEX scholarship, which if you guys didn't know, Kabin is a PhD student in Japan, but his tuition and expenses are all paid by the government. So can you tell us a bit about MEX scholarship in Japan? From I mean, from what I heard, like MEX scholarship is provided by the government of Japan and they gave it to the international students who either live in... I'm not sure whether who lives in Japan could could get this, but most of the students came from, like, uh, Southeast Asian country, like Thailand or Malaysia or even Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. And um, there's two paths you can get this uh, scholarship. One is, like, through your uh, embassy, through your uh, Japan embassy in, 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 the, in your country. And another one is like recommendation from the professor. So I got the uh, second path. Like I got recommended by my professor. Yeah, through my professor. And um, yeah, they cover all of your expenses, even like you know your daily life expenses or tuition, admission fee, and then, yeah, even the ticket flight, um, round trip from your country to Japan and like Japan after you graduate. You go. You got another ticket to go back to your country, and you don't have any, you know, contract. Like you need to stay how many years in Japan or stuff like that. It's just like give away. Yeah. Wow, that's a wonderful set of benefits that you receive from through the Max scholarship by the government. So, is there any like a particular set of criteria that a student needs to meet in order to qualify for the Max scholarship? Yeah, there will be a certain criteria that you would need to have first is like your score from your master a degree and like your grade so a student needs to have a master's degree yeah they need i mean for my for phd application for but PhD. they also offer the master degree max scholarship and um yeah for a grade and i think other than that would be like whether your course previous course like your for me like master degree is like acceptable for the PhD is whether you are like you know how to say you could you could study on on that that area or not they would check that and yeah more than that I think most difficult thing would be like get the um what is it called 
the recommendation letter from your like previous university, previous degree professor, supervisor. Mine is pretty simple because like I do master degree in Japan, the university that I study, and then I continue on the same university. And most of the information of my, you know, my master degree and like uh, recommendation later was like easily obtained, and they could they could do it internally, and I don't I don't need to push much of a effort to try to get the document. So yeah, so it was quite easy. In that was quite easy. Internally. Yes. Probably you've faced this question several times and many people asked you. Uh, so m my question is simple. What do you think about AI and at its current stage, what's going to happen? And after five years, w what's what's its impact going to be like? I really love this question, actually. One of my PhD class, we were discussing about, you know, like a, a research topic, like what are the AI, how the AI will impact. Um, like I think these recent years when like the LLM like ChatGPT came out, it show much potential what it can do. So like there's one student she's introducing one paper that could do like it called like agent system. So that agent could basically do whatever you want uh, it to do. So it runs um, together with your uh, computer. So basically you ask it to run some command that you would basically do it but you use like natural language you say like could you make this for me and it do that for you and when when she shows that professor asks like um like the stuff the the question that people might afraid like would like would it be the system that would replace human but i i don't think so i think it would be more help like help human more to be more efficient to be more focused on what need to be done like you know more important task so i see a lot of positive you know benefit to this uh you know really fast de development but still there are a lot of concern you need to basically taking care or like uh think about it truly so yeah i mean you well some people might not want to change but i think it's time for you to obtain new skill set and be ready with this technology. Yeah. As that's it for this interview and thanks for coming Kabin and interviewing with me and since it's my first time interviewing you about PhD and stuff like that you gave some solid information I hope it helps the viewers so would you like to say something at the end? Guys, it's fine it's not gonna replace us anytime soon I mean at least two years